2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Now, if you read a little bit in the context, this is talking about unforgiveness. But again, in the Bible, there are much larger aspects to what these verses mean. Satan has devices that we are not supposed to be ignorant of. Romans 1.30 is talking about reprobates, rejected people by God, and it's describing them. It says, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, now here it is, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, inventors of evil things, we should not be ignorant of Satan's devices. Now we have Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may, may be able to stand against the wiles. That word also means schemes. Against the schemes of the devil. Now if you've been following my channel for a while. I've exposed some of these inventions. These evil inventions of man. These devices that Satan has taught man. That the technology is so out of this world that you could not understand these things in the natural man. You would have to be somehow spiritually taught these things. I'm going to show you a few clips. But as I've talked about, the artificial intelligence that is named after me for some reason. And I've shown you guys how this stuff is being used on me. I'm going to talk about it for a second. If you're tired of hearing about it, I'm sorry, but me understanding these things now this year has given me so many answers about things in my past, and it all makes sense now. So the Defense Department's Artificial Intelligence Hub is using some of its technical savvy to help the United States respond to the C-Virus. It's also... Learning how it can operate in a quarantined world. Think about this, okay? A quarantined world, a world on lockdown. Think about it. The future, great tribulation, all this. But the leader of the Joint Artificial Intelligence Center says it still has work to do in employing the people it needs. The Joint Artificial Intelligence Center started using its expertise for Project Salus, as I've shown on my ID. My last name is Salas, guys. There's no joke, okay? At the beginning of the C-Virus crisis, that project takes in data to deliver predictive analytics on supply chain risk caused by the disease. Now, of course, the C-Virus at the front, they're really using this technology on people um, like me to predict the future i've told you guys before i've known things that people are going to say before they say them i've known numbers on, a number on scratcher i've known when i'm going to see a person that i haven't seen in years and it all comes to me in my head like a computer and i've shown you guys so much information on my channel that is from out of this world like the columbus christopher columbus pattern it's like computer showed me in my head this pattern and what to look up and other things it's it's intelligence that that is hooked up to another dimension. I This is what they even say. I'm going to show you a clip right now about the D-Wave. It's like a supercomputer that's a big black cube. Just like the big black cube that the Muslims walk around. Their religion is Kabbalah. And Kaaba means cube and Allah means God. Cube God. Gordy Rose even says in this video that it's like an alien God. right? So this technology that they're using is not regular technology like we think it is hooked up to other dimensional that's why i get otherworldly knowledge supernatural things that i can't know that i know and i've documented some of these things on my youtube channel but there's just so much uh, so this technology i'm going to show you i'm going to prove it right now is hooked up to us and another dimension this is what they look like there are two of them these are from our lab in Burnaby in British Columbia. From the outside, they look like giant black monoliths, big metal boxes. 
about 10 feet on a side, 12 feet tall. And they are powered, they have a fridge inside them, a refrigerator that cools these chips to almost absolute zero. Just a wisp, a fraction of a degree above absolute zero. Hundreds of times colder than interstellar space. Amongst the coldest and most isolated and extreme conditions that humans have ever been able to engineer. These fridges, interestingly enough, which are called pulse tube dilution refrigerators, have a thing called a pulse tube, which emits a sound roughly once per second, which sounds eerily like a heartbeat. So if you're you have the opportunity to stand next to one of these machines, it is an awe-inspiring thing, at least for me. It feels like an altar to an alien god. It feels like an altar to an alien god. It, they really are impressive machines. At the heart of this big box is a tiny chip about the size of your thumbnail. And on this chip resides all of the wonder and magic that makes this thing go. I'm not going to describe in any mathematical detail how it all works, but let me give you an analogy. In quantum mechanics, there's this concept that an, a, a, a thing can exist in two states which are mutually exclusive at the same time, quote unquote. And I'm using those words because the English language was developed before we had concepts to describe what these things actually are doing. But I'm going to give you a, a, a roundabout way of understanding this. Imagine that there really are parallel universes out there, and now imagine you have two that are exactly identical in every respect, all the way out to the horizon as far as we can see, down to the last little atomic detail of every single thing, with only one difference. And that's the value of a little thing called a qubit on this chip, which is a contraction of quantum bit. And that qubit is very much like a bit or a transistor in a conventional computer. It has two distinct physical states, which we call zero and one for bit. In a conventional computer, these are mutually exclusive. That device is either one or the other, and never anything else. In a quantum computer, that device can be in this strange situation where these two parallel universes have a nexus, a point in space where they overlap. And when you increase the number of these devices, you, every time you add one of these qubits, you double the number of these parallel universes that you have access to. Until such time when you get to a chip like this, which is about 500 of these bits, you have something like two to the 500th power of these guys living in that chip. So the way I think about it is that the shadows of these parallel worlds overlap with ours. And if we're smart enough, we can dive into them and grab their resources and pull them back into ours to make an effect in our world. Now this may sound very odd to you and bizarre, and in fact I am using language that a normal theoretical physicist probably wouldn't use, but this is, what I'm telling you is absolutely correct and in line with the way that these things actually work. We've been doing this for some time now. We've been doing this for some time now. This is Gordy Rose, and he told you we've been doing this for some time now. They've been pulling out information. It's way deeper than, than just they're pulling out information with this quantum computer technology. They're, these devices are hooked up to other dimensions. And, and somehow it affects, it's affecting me. They have targeted me for a, now I look back half of my life maybe. Half of, maybe half, maybe my whole life. Maybe they know who's coming into this world and what our destiny is. And they are here to hinder that because they're following the directions of Satan. Which is masked with a bunch of truth. Right? And so they have these machines that are called D-Wave. D for what? Demonic? Dimensions? Right? Demonic waves? Dimensional waves? And he tells you, if you watch this whole video, he explains it even more. These things are hooked up 
and connected to maybe hell, maybe somewhere in between, maybe heaven. I can't be exact, all right? But it's not just regular science. This is what you get when you mix in witchcraft and the seances, connecting with entities that give you this knowledge. Remember the knowledge, the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the garden. Don't mess with this. Don't mess with this stuff, right? And that's why Apple Computer's logo is a fruit with a bite out of it. And all the six colors, right, for the six frequencies or the six uh, rays of light, right, that are frequencies and vibrations and all this. But this has to do with that knowledge that they're not supposed to be playing with, right, because it's not for man to mess with, period. That's what God said. And so they have these machines and they're targeting me probably others out there and what does it look like it's it's exactly like the kaaba stone kaaba means cube the kaaba stone that muslims walk around right islam and it comes from the religion of kabbalah like i said kaaba means stone or cube cube excuse me and allah means god cube god you just heard him say it's like an alien god well look up on google in the KJV, the words alien God. <laughs> Do you know that the Antichrist worships an alien God? It literally says in the KJV that he worships an alien God that his fathers, forefathers, you know, from the past never did. I mean, there it's right here, you know. This is this is man's evil inventions and even the old testament talks about man's evil inventions right they build evil inventions and their religion says that it's okay to do good and evil so did this this is the wisdom of lucifer who was lucifer the light bearer which is knowledge this is his wisdom that is corrupted because they use it for corrupted purposes but they ain't even supposed to have it Period. That's what God said. And like I said before, the book of Enoch specifically doesn't beat around the bush. It specifically says that the angels taught men their powers. And it also refers to the secrets of heaven. This is that. This is the stuff from thousands of years ago. That the angels, of course, the disobedient angels, taught man the knowledge of good and evil, God and the devil. Add an O to good, it's God. Excuse me, add, subtract the O from good, it's God. God is good. And add a D to evil, and it's devil. These things are synonymous. Good automatically goes with God, and evil automatically goes with the devil that's what synonymous means they're a, they're one in the same to an extent god is still god but even the bible says that god is good and all good things come from god and the opposite with the devil and what the devil does is convince these people that evil is good and good is evil that's what their religion says that it's okay to do evil as well as as it's okay to do good go look it up the leader of the satanic church, Anton LaVey, said it himself, that he believes good is necessary just as well as evil. And when God does evil in the Bible, it's in judgment. And we know, us who believe the Bible and the New Testament about Jesus Christ, Yeshua, whatever you want to call him, Jesus Christ is just a transliteration of his name. We know that we are not supposed to do judgment on others or evil. It's the vengeance is God's vengeance. And as hard as that is, that's the hardest thing in life. Is to forgive when you're not supposed to forgive and let things go. They don't believe that. They don't do that. They believe in paying back, so to speak. Doing God's vengeance, so to speak. Or just... They're their own gods because most of these people now pay attention to this what I'm about to say most of these people 
are atheists, that they believe, you know, when they're in the spirit realm, we, we call it, that they get these this knowledge from the ether and from, you know, their higher self. And so they don't believe in just one monotheistic God. Some of them, you know, they believe that they're God, right? And that the way that they got this information is just through their own works, right? Like through doing seances and going in the spirit with whatever, right? So a lot of them are atheists. They just believe in the force. This is what Kabbalah is. That's why Star Wars, remember, may the force be with you. Uh, even the police are called the force, right? This force, that they're just forces that, that work, right? That if you can harness the force, then you're God. Even if you look up Manly P. Hall, the big time Freemason guy, he says, you know, the big secret when you become a 33rd degree Mason is you're God, right? That Lucifer is God, but you're Lucifer and God and whoever harnesses the power is God, right? Even in Romans chapter one, it talks about this similar thing where they worship or they obey the creation rather than the creator. That's what all this stuff is, you know, like the the man of sin worshiping an alien god and technology even when they worship themselves they worship nature it's stuff like this if you look into witchcraft what are they all into nature they give reverence over reverence and oh you know over apply that and basically worship nature and that's where the power is and there is power there because god put it there but the god that created everything the one that came in the flesh, the word of God, we know by Colossians that through him, by him, all things were created and made. That's the one that they reject today. That's the one that they rejected 2,000 years ago. And this is nothing new. There is no new thing under the sun. This technology was part of the reason, in my understanding, in the days of Noah, why God just flooded everything. Because it got so bad with man's evil inventions, people wanting to be God because they can harness some of this power that God has put here with his own power. This is all connected to the ancient past. And they tell the world, right, the, uh, the ignorant world, and I'm not using that in a derogatory way. I'm saying they don't know because they've been lied to. But they tell the world that this is something new. And if you knew your Bible... And if you've been doing research on the internet in which God has allowed to exist, that you know that Ecclesiastes 1.9 says that there is no new thing under the sun. When you look in the past at the hieroglyphs and at all the writings in the past, you know that this technology, this witchcraft is nothing new. You know, and, and this is where we're at. And I've shown you guys in my last video, I've been being watched for a long, long, long time. And I'm not just trying to emphasize that to make me some kind of awesome, you know, dude, like I'm so tough. You don't want to go through what I've been through. Trust me. But I've been with this is the year, the year of the dragon that everything is being revealed to me. It's all making sense now. It makes sense now. My life makes sense now. And again, God, the way that he works sometimes he will let you go into a situation, be put into a situation, and it's going to hurt and it's going to be hard, almost unbearable, so that when you come out or understand the situation or understand why you're in the situation, you can expose it and be a witness to it. And that is why I believe that this has all been shown to me now and that God let me go through all this, the things that... People wouldn't even understand if you explained it to them. The why I'm still going through it is to be a witness to it. You have to understand that that's what we're doing here. We are, we are a witness to the evil in this world. And a witness takes a stand in a courtroom. And you testify. You testify against the ones, the evil ones, and the wickedness of the world. Te that is why when you look at the Bible, Jesus is your advocate. That's what the lawyer, a term for a lawyer is. It's an advocate because this is, this world 
It's a trial. We're, that's why it's called a testimony. It's a test. That's why we're called witnesses. Because after this, we testify. We give our testimony. Who do you give your testimony to in court? You give your testimony to the judge, right? And and the witnesses and all the whole courtroom. You see? And what we do, and we're judging. Even, even Paul says that we will judge the angels. Our lives... Our, listen to this. Our lives, the people that do good and evil to us, are judging them on how they treat us because we're the witnesses. And God hides his face on purpose from so many people. So many people. And when we come along and they do what they do to us, they condemn themselves by their actions. And God hides his face for a reason. From certain people, from many people, and he shows his face. He lets himself be known inside of you to certain people. And it's all, it's all in the end. It's all about judgment. And it's all about a test. And it's all about a trial and a courtroom and witnesses. That's what this whole thing is. And some people are going to be condemned to hell. And some people are going to go to heaven. And that's it.